1974, Swami Vishnu Devananda talks about Lord Ganesha, Yogi Camp, Valmoran, Quebec, Canada. Symbolically, Ganesha has got a little face and a human body. That is symbolical. So, in some case, for persons, wisdom, memory, and knowledge. And uh, this is the first manifestation of God, the universe, in all religious aspects. That's why we start Jai Ganesha, Jai Ganesha, we always start with Jai Ganesha. In temple worship, Om Dhan Kanavade Namaha, that's the mantra of Ganapati, so we start with that. And so everything we start with Ganesha, nothing goes without Ganesha, but the other way, a lot of obstacles and dangers we have to pass through. The very name of Ganesha will somehow the power of the name of the practical aspects of God, the effect to neutralize all the negative influence on our life, on our actions. So before we perform anything, we have to neutralize the negative influences of the world. There are so many negative influences, even when we came to the yoga camp to take future swimming pool, there are not the meaning of the obstacles we may have, physiologically, psychologically, and by your friends, families, and so on. It's not easy for you to overcome all this and then be here. And after coming here, all the new influences, planetary influences, your own negative lower emotions, all can distract you the purpose for which you came to the Yoga camp and so you may be doing. And there we just after taking so much struggle you can leave. Or you may not even get the proper benefit because of the influences, negative influences from the people. Many people are envious that that you are having that type of training, or the discipline you are having, and the others may be just uh, do not like you to enter into this life, some of your parents or friends and families and so on, and the parental influences can be very negative. All this can be removed and destroyed by the power of the Ganesha's name. That's why all students receive Ganesha first. So that the slogan First, you'll be learning. So, you, uh, that's on the page on Janus Clara, which is the page number. 18. Dietary slogan. Now, as I said, there's a fruit in the hands of Lord Krishna. It's all symbolic, and fruit represents the ageless state. Only God can feel or God can, can play the music when it is empty. So the bamboo, food is made up of bamboo, and we follow. So the gas blows into it. So beautiful melodious sound can come in. God plays because it, there's no substance inside. Same way, our body is like the food. And when we empty the ego, as I mentioned last yesterday, the egoism and the humility, etc., at that time, the law power flows through that flow. This is the universal law. Law power is infinite. It can flow through your body only in the egoism state, then it flows. And that ego is completely problem. So these all things, these all of the means are there. This is when I have to progress. Like Lord Shiva has got on the tree that the cobra in his neck and then he's dancing on the demon or each step represents a cycle of existence. One life, one cycle gone and the dissolution takes place, another cycle starts. So the universal rhythm represents by his dance, the divine cosmic dance. So many symbolic meanings are there. So in the Hindu pantheons of the thousands of of God, the gods, and so forth. But I mean, it is not just thousands of God exist. It's only one God, 
that we can play this part in many ways as one person plays the part of several. For example, Sir Dr. Reddy is the father at home, husband for his wife, and uh, for, um, uncle for his ladies and ladies. Grandfather maybe for grandchild, and he himself may be the son for his mother or parents, and grandson for his grandparents, and he goes to office, he is the president of the, of the office, and um, when the unofficial person is a friend of the friend, so each one relates to him, maybe a judge in the court, he is called judge, or maybe he can be a hangman. So he will be called hangman. But the person performing different functions are one. But their relationship is different. Someone relating as father or husband or uncle or a boss. But the person will change. But he is performing various duties to specific people. So they relate that relationship in the form of aunt, uncle, and so on. Say that one supreme being exists, we relate to him the way we want it. Father in the heaven, that's the way you want to relate him. God is very happy to accept that relationship. Or if you want to accept him as a husband, as gopis and radhas did, well, he is ready to accept that. Or you can just worship him as a child, like Devaki or Shishara, and all this, so the worship of Krishna, the baby Krishna, with all this beautiful divine um, thanks he performed, well, that is. So you can accept him anything you want, but he's depending upon entirely your relationship. But he is the one person, he never changes. Same way, when you say Ganesha, Subramanya, Saraswati, all the invoke, Invocations we are going to do, it's not actually different. God exists, but definitely the God manifests Himself for a specific purpose so that we can relate and get the benefit of the particular energy. So the Ganesha energy is to remove the obstacles. Ganesha manifestation. Then we must invoke the blessing of Subramanya, Lord Subramanya. He is the, the general of the gods in the heaven. He is also manifestation of Lord Shiva. Ganesha and Subramanya are both manifestation of Lord Shiva. Uh, Shiva is a protest. In human terms, we call sons of Shiva. But again, do not just say God is God, son, daughter, father, husband, wife, and children. Mm -hmm. Don't accept that. It begins to relate to your mind, there must be something. So the two parts of Lord manifestation of Shiva manifest in the forms of Ganesha and Subramanya, the two sons we call it. 